Hello, and welcome to the 2022 National Needs Assessment uh, TA Cafe. Um, my name is Kendall Arthur. Or I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, my name is Kendall Arthur, she, her pronouns, and I'm located in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm a training and capacity building manager with Youth Collaboratory and the RITAC point of contact for regions one and two. Um, and FISB awarded a cooperative agreement to Youth Collaboratory to operate RITAC, the Runaway and Homeless Youth Training and Technical Assist Assistance Center is designed to provide family and youth service bureau funded runaway and homeless youth grantees and allies in the field with training and technical assistance services and supports. The vision of RITAC is to strengthen the capacity of communities to meet the immediate needs of youth and young adults experiencing homelessness and housing instability and assist them with a successful path to adulthood and transition to self-sufficiency. You can visit the RITAC website for TA, TA resources and additional training opportunities, and you can request TA through this, uh, the form that will drop in the link or via email. We're glad you're here for this conversation about the National Needs Assessment. Please feel free to be on or off video and mute when you are not speaking. Now, I'm pleased to introduce my colleagues, Colleen Schlecht and Amanda Griffin, researchers at Chapin Hall. Thank you, Kendall, and welcome everybody to our TA Cafe today. As Kendall mentioned, I am Colleen Schlecht, uh, you, she, her pronouns, and I am a researcher at Chapin Hall. Um, it is good to have you all here. I'm joined by my colleague, Amanda Griffin, and she will um, introduce herself in a minute when we kick things off. But just briefly, um, for those who are not aware, Chapin Hall is a policy research institute. Um, we are located in Chicago, but we have staff uh, kind of all over the place. I am currently in Philadelphia, outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, um, and Amanda is also um, a remote worker. But we um, partner with Youth Collaboratory to help operate and manage RITEC. Um, and so in that role, we are um, doing a lot of the kind of uh, providing evaluative and, and research um, to back some of the services, the webinars, the TFAs, and, and evaluate the events that um, take place and provide the evidence um, uh, to support RITEC and their services and how they support, we support you all in the work you're doing in your communities. Um, so part of uh, our role and our work in collaboration with these collaboratories to help uh, lead this annual need, national needs assessment. Um, so we um, thought it would be helpful to have this uh, TA Cafe today to help walk through the needs assessment which has been in the field now for um, about a week and a half because I know it's lengthy. I know we have some ways we recommend completing it in terms of because we do just want one response per uh, grantee. And so to just walk through the instrument with you all, hear your questions, be able to answer them and, um, and make sure that uh, there's nothing that um, is confusing or, or, or too complicated that is preventing you from you all completing it and make sure that we convey clearly um, how important it is to, to get this feedback from you all each year. So I'm going to turn it over to Amanda and feel free um, also as we're as we're talking, we'll explain a little bit about um, the needs assessment where we're going to walk through the instrument, but please feel free to um, drop questions in the chat or just interrupt us. Um, it's very casual and, and we're happy to sort of answer questions on the fly as well. So thank you again and Amanda. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Amanda Griffin. And as Colleen mentioned, I am a researcher at Chapin Hall. My pronouns are she, her, hers, typically located in Eugene, Oregon, currently in my childhood home in Alexandria, Virginia. So I'm happy to be joining you from the East Coast this time. Um, and so my role on this project is to evaluate the data that you all provide us after your wonderful technical assistance supportive meetings and in this needs assessment. So I'm really excited to talk to you about this today. Um, so this slide really, oh, this is a very sensitive clicker. This slide, this is an overview of exactly what Kendall and Colleen said, which is RITEC provides technical training and technical assistance to FISB funded program grantees. And we work with RITEC and FISB to evaluate what you're receiving, your experiences and what you might need in the future. And so this is a meeting about our conducting our annual national needs assessment. 
So the annual national needs assessment is done to assess grantees, technical assistance needs and expectations. So as some of you might remember, this was conducted a year ago and we're doing it again to reassess what you have been accessing, the types of services that you've been attending or receiving knowledge about and what you might want in the future. Um, the findings from the needs assessment are used to identify priorities for the next year's TTA and develop new resources for grantees organizations. Um, and the idea is to provide you the results of these uh, of the needs assessment to help improve FISB improve what they're being provided and also just inform grantees of what, what your colleagues and what your other partners might be saying. And in the chat, I think Kendall has already shared the summary of the results from last year's needs assessments if you're super curious like me. <clears throat> so the idea behind the needs assessment is that each organization will complete one as a unit. It's estimated to take about 30 minutes to complete and the survey is available to be completed with an online form that we'll walk through. So the main point of this is for you to complete it as a group with everyone in a room together. Um, so one survey per grantee. Um, and the deadline for survey completion, just to mark your calendars, is July 8th. So that's fastly approaching. I'm not quite sure where June went. Um, to get into some more of the details about the survey collection, completion, the best practices we recommend is to identify a diverse group of staff who might have answers to the questions that we're going to ask you, schedule a meeting time as a group, or repurpose an existing meeting to discuss the different questions we'll be asking and kind of come to a consensus about what your answers might be. Distribute that PDF that you can also that was also inserted in the chat, I believe, and is also located on the Tech website. So that people have a chance in advance to think of their answers. Maybe if they want to prepare um, something in advance, there's some open free response questions. Um, and that, again, the aim is for you to come to a consensus to the answers that reflect the organization as a whole. Um, really meant to make sure everyone has a chance to express what is and is not working and what they might want in the future. And then after you have that meeting as a group, you designate an individual to import input the answers into the web-based form I mentioned. And just for reference, that web-based form has already been sent to a designated person at your organization. So that link should have been sent already. And there are reminder emails that go out that has that link in it as well, just so you have access to it. Um, are there any questions so far about the survey completion? I'm a fast talker, so I understand if someone needs time. And yes, as Colleen mentioned in the chat, um, by a diverse group of staff, this can include leadership, program staff, case managers, whoever might have input on both the technical assistances they've attended or what want to attend in the future. So just as an overview of the different domains that are that is covered in the survey, kind of big picture, um, there, which are listed in the red boxes above, there's background, training needs, assessments, best practices and programs, and communication preferences. So background is what you think, the name of your organization, the type of services you provide, the training needs is all about your audience, the outcome, um, the topics, the outcome measures you might be interested in, in learning more about and different types of collaboration across systems. The assessments is asking about the types of screenings and assessment tools you currently use or might wanna use in the future and learn about and what the how important the tools are for you and your organization. And practices and programs are really about the evidence-based um, practices and programs that the organization provides and might want to also implement in the future. Um, and that we could provide as technical assistance in the future. Um, and then communication preferences is really about your communication with FISB and RISEC program network. And so this talks about things like social media, email blasts, briefs, like what's the best way that you'd like to learn information, what ways you interface with FISB and RISEC and what would work best for your organization or what you're not currently using and maybe why that is. Um, so it's really pride input of how we should be conveying and disseminating new information to your organization in the most effective way. Um, I'll pause because the next thing that we're going to do is walk through the survey. So are there any questions so far? And if it's survey related, we're going to get lots of visuals for you to see.
And then if I can share my screen, I'll show you the survey. You'll have to excuse um, the large, large number of tabs I have open on my web browser. I'm one of those people. There's two types of people, people with only a few tabs and people with many tabs. And I'm a many tab person. Um, so the PDF is located on the RyTech website uh, for you to download and use and edit as you see fit with your organization. And then after you have consensus on the answers that you potentially wrote down with paper and pen or entered on your computers, you would go to this link to then fill out the information electronically. So it'd be a really quick process for you. Um, so this is the standard explanation of what this is, that it's voluntary, that your information will be kept private and not to be discussed and de-identified, um, and just instructions on who to contact with any questions, which would be me, and that it is an IRB approved survey. Um, and so you would go to the background information that I mentioned, fill out your name, which I'm gonna put as test because we are testing, and you would select your region, um, where, where your organization is, the, what type of region you would describe your organization as being in, and the different types of FISB grants that your organization currently has. And you can select multiple if there are multiple grants that you currently have, as an example. And again, just yes, asking, answering questions like best describing the number of youth that you serve directly, um, what types of non-funded programs your organization might be providing as well, um, and the types of personnel that's providing contrib contrib contributing to your answer. So executive leadership, directors, both leadership and program practitioners and, and staff. And that's when we really get into the, the meat of the survey is what I would say. So about Ritech service utilization and experiences, and it really does go through each of the types of programs that are being provided. So on the left, you can see TA cafes, regional trainings, e-learning, site-based training, social media connections, and you would go through at the organization level and say yes or no to whether you've accessed these types of trainings um, and answer a set of questions about what reflects your agreement with statements like um, they help your organization or the, the amount that you use them. Um, and again, you would go through each question and as a group kind of come to a consensus about your different answers. Um, and I sh will go through the series of questions quickly because this might get a little bit redundant, but Colleen, feel free to chime in if you think I should provide more detail. No, I mean, I think this is good. I was just gonna note on the last one. So it, as Amanda mentioned, it's broken out first to get an understanding of what you've used in the past year and how useful it is. So for any um, type of TA that you indicate you use, there will be a follow-up question asking you to rate its usefulness. And then, so here, if you click yes, you'll see down below it. Um, and, and that should be pretty straightforward. It'll only show the ones you say yes to. Um, and the next one is just two questions about um, preparing for a monitoring visit. Um, and then I think, is that you, Amanda, going through it? Yep. Yeah. So um, the next section is, is quite quick going through a monitoring, um, what, what you might need to prepare for a monitoring visit. Um, just a handful of questions. And then we really get into the meat of the um, needs assessment, which is to understand um, the training and TA needs that your organization, organization has um, across a whole number of outcome areas, as well as what, what sort of level of staff you think need um, to be in the intended audience um, and sort of who would use it and how. Um, so as you can see, Amanda's running through who you prioritize to receive the training and technical assistance over the coming year. And then a series of topics around um, TA that might be needed around sort of leadership and operational needs, um, which is sort of separate from uh, the programmatic and uh, more focused outcome, outcome area focused training. But each of these has quite a long list of topic areas, and we would just encourage to make sure that any one that you think would really um, be helpful to receive TA around and that your someone from your organization would likely attend an event um, if offered by RITEC around this topic, to please check it. Because um, the more sort of response and the more comprehensive respondents are and where their needs are, the better we're able to um, sort of make decisions about 
uh, events in the future. And so then after, yeah, I'm running through this because um, we don't need to read through all of the options, but we go through, so we ask about those like sort of operational needs. And then we go through the FISB's four core, four core outcome areas to ask more uh, tailored topic, topic areas that are specific to that, um, to each of the four outcome areas. So first we ask about some topics that would fit into uh, your needs around um, safe and stable housing outcomes. And then we dive into education and or employment outcomes, um, needs you might have around uh, permanent connections, um, and then needs around uh, improving young people's social and emotional well-being outcomes. And then we have, and there's some overlap in some of these, but for the most part, they're distinct lists. Then we do have a cross-cutting um, list where um, they kind of, as I mentioned, you know, there are some cross-cutting in the previous, but we tried to keep those that are that go across um, the outcome areas into this list. So these probably cover um, topics that would that would address several of the outcome areas, um, including um, and, and some of the, you know, the priorities to cover some of the priorities that, that you all have. So again, some pretty lengthy lists, but hopefully if you've if you've had a chance to review the PDF before you go in and fill this out, you it's quick for you to kind of see which ones are priority areas for your organization and you can just quickly check them off. Um, and then, so I think this is the last one in the training needs. So this is about like um, TA you might need in actually measuring um, and measurement along these outcome areas. Um, Cause we have heard in the past and this is um, why it's helpful for us to get as many responses as we can on this. That, that there is some, um, there has been a request for, for TA and for training from RITEC around, um, um, around the measurement of these outcomes and not just the topics specific within those outcome areas, but um, helping grantees uh, like yourself in, in, um, in strengthening measurement processes and practices. So I think, I mean, that's most, we ask, you know, for open-ended, but um, that's most of the, the um, that's the the meat of it is around sort of topic areas and, and having you check through those are the longest lists for sure um, but it covers sort of those five or six different um, um, top areas or topics where you can be um, selecting from a list and similarly we just go through and we ask about different organizations that you might be collaborating with and who you might wanna collaborate in the future and receive training on those types of collaborations to add collaborations at the organizational level. And similarly asking what topics would help in be strengthening those collaborations. Um, and so yes, yeah, so we just keep going through and asking if these, each of these domains. Um, what I think is adaptive of this survey is we also ask about um, public health and community emergencies given what everyone experienced with the pandemic, we've learned that it's important to kind of think about these emergency services in a different lens and a more focused lens. And so there's a topic of what type of um, public health or emergency, community emergency topics you would like to have included training on. Um, this includes things like COVID-19 resources in the past and ongoing, but also things like emergency settings um, and virtual programs to, to leverage you know, any needs you might have. Yeah, essentially like what training would help you operate um, and serve you, the youth you serve in a, in a situation of like a, a pandemic or any other um, public health or community emergency? What, what would help um, prepare and, and support your uh, work and your service during those times? Um, and then again, going through the assessments and screenings, there's questions about do you use screening tools? And if you say yes, there's a very long list of all the different types of screenings your organization might use. And you would say, yes, I use these five regularly. Um, but there's many options to, to say that you do or do not use potentially in terms of screenings on site. And then thinking about um, if you need assistance, technical assistance in using screenings around certain domains, things like mental health, substance use, human trafficking family needs, benefits, eligibility. Um, and similarly thinking about how important would it be to have technical assistance around 
um, assessment tools. And so that's a similar question of how important is this to your organization and how would it, you know, on a regular basis, would you want to use or have the tech training and technical assistance on those topics? And then the next section is around evidence-based and evidence-informed practices and similarly has a list of potential evidence-based practices that programs might be utilizing. And so there's a nice long list for you to discuss as a group to say which parts and branches of the organization might be using these. Um, but also there is an option, what I, I forgot to mention for both of those is that you can say other and enter in whatever other type of survey method you've used on site um, that might not be listed above. Um, and in addition to nominating the types of surveys that you do, there's questions about um, your implementation and fidelity monitoring and participating in TTA around quality and quality continuous improvement and how those uh, programs are operating internally. And again, there it's if you whichever um, practices you selected, it would ask if you um, could use or would want TA around implementing them. Um, in the previous section, I was just gonna note in the assessment um, section, there's questions around, you know, um, which ones you use, but then also, you know, in, in if there's any particular TA around, around, the, around using assessment and screening tools. And if so, what is that? Is it in selecting the right tools to use? Is it actually implementing them? Is it then using the results? So we um, try to get a, a little bit further into, so if you are using tools or if you're not, where can um, RITE have helped strengthen the use of those, um, those assessment and screening tools? Um, and same for the AVPs. And so this last part is just as Amanda mentioned, the communication preferences that you have. So where are you getting information um, from the RIE program network, um, which includes, you know, the Clearinghouse, SafeLine, RIE Tech, and FISB itself, and which one of their social media platforms. This is just to help us understand how to better um, get information to the, the grantees um, and in what format um, information is best received, where does it, um, you know, which, which materials are work for you and your staff's needs and your colleagues needs and which um, are not very useful. And then what's, I think we get like, what sort of information do you wanna see or do you use from these different um, outlets? And if you're not using these outlets, you know, just to get an understanding of why or how they could be improved so that they would uh, serve their purpose to, to deliver communication and information to you in a way that you all need it and will use it. Um, and can share it with your colleagues and with the, the youth that you serve. So that's the last section is just around some communication preferences to make sure that we can improve how we are, um, how the program network as a whole, not just RITEC, is getting information um, that's critical for you all to have from FISB and the RITE program. And so that I believe is it, then an open-ended question for feedback. So, um, I think now we would just open it up to you all. This is, if you've completed the, again, this is the second year that this um, needs assessment. It sort of looks similar and is in this format. There are some changes to content questions, but it's fairly similar to what was done last year. Again, um, you know, knowing that context and um, changes that uh, organizations will have changing demands and needs. This is why it's done on an annual basis to make sure we can um, stay on top of the changing needs of um, the RIE grantees. And, but it is similar. So if you if you did it last year, you'll see that um, it looks pretty familiar. Uh, again, the PDF hopefully helps you to share it around with your organization, your colleagues, your leadership, your program staff, um, and get input. And so that when you actually go into the web form, you're just able to um, more quickly move move through it. Um, but I guess we would stop here and see if anyone had any questions for us about the survey itself or about um, the logistics around completing it.
has anyone here started it or been into the web form yet and um, or has looked at the PDF even yet and, and started going through the questions? I don't think I'm seeing anything pop up in the chat. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Elizabeth. So that's what the sort of the process we're hoping people take um, to take a look, set up a meeting to complete, and then um, come to agreement on um, and make sure like all of the needs and priorities across the organization are represented. That's um, not so much as like, in a, I mean, it's in agreement, but to make sure that all of the different across, you know, if you have multiple grants, across different staff levels and roles that all of the training and TA needs are represented in your response. So thank you very much for taking that approach. We appreciate it. So the man mentioned it'll be open for another two weeks or so, it closes two weeks from tomorrow, I think is July 8th already. Um, there'll be a few more reminders sent out. Um, and uh, we also have our, on the information that's sent to you all, we have um, uh, in the info at rytech.net that you're welcome to submit questions or comments if something comes up as you're completing it. Um, you can reach out to Amanda or myself as well. Happy to respond to any questions we get. Um, and um, hopefully that we can, um, we can receive all your responses by July 8th so they can be included in our, in, in the data that we look at and, and how we're able to then report back out to you all on what we heard from you and from the RIE grantees. Okay, well, if no one has questions, then um, thanks for your attention. Good luck completing it. And please do let us know if anything comes up. Oh, there are the two email addresses. Um, if anything comes up, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen and Amanda. Um, as uh, both of them stressed, please do complete this. Encourage other grantees you know to complete this because this does help inform the research that Chapin Hall does, the trainings that uh, RITAC puts together for you throughout the year, as well as inform some decisions that FISB makes as well. Um, so this is really important because it's how we know what you're looking for. Um, so I just wanted to close out with a couple of upcoming events. Um, so the Rye National Grantee Training is November 15th through November 17th, um, and that is virtual this year. Um, and speaking of that, our call for abstracts, if you are interested in presenting a, a workshop, um, the abstracts are due tomorrow. So uh, be working on those if you're interested in presenting there. Um, we did host a staff recruitment training and retention TA cafe this month, and it was so popular and filled up so quickly that we have to do it again. So we are hosting another one of those on August 8th. The registration for that was released in our latest RITAC roundup, um, or you can contact us at info at RITAC.net if you'd like uh, the registration link for that. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of training dates and resources that are being released this summer. So um, be looking out for the following topics. Our human trafficking series for RIE providers will kick off um, sometime in August and uh, with an additional training in September and a really cool toolkit coming out in late October. We'll also be releasing this summer a harm reduction resource, aftercare best practices, four core outcomes, and we just released a youth and young adult mental health resource guide with a follow-up TA cafe and or webinar to be announced later this month. Um, and again, if you have any questions or you need any help from the RITAC team, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll be glad to help you um, or to reach out to Chapin Hall and they will also help you complete the national needs assessment.